Hi everyone, welcome to Community CPA 3 p.m. webinar. My name is Catherine Tran and I work with Yingsa. Um, today, Thursdays are our special day. We always have our guest speaker come on and today we have our special friend, uh, Jane Armstrong. She works at the SBA um, and partners with a lot of, and talks to a lot of small businesses um, in Des Moines, around Iowa, to help support businesses during this time. So a very critical need right now. So we'll get to Jane and the work of the SBA in a minute. I want to go over some basic uh, introduction about community CPA, if that's okay, Jane. of the SBA on small business assistance. All right, so firm information, this is just our basic uh, information. So you can find us online at communitycpa.com and we are also available through social media. So you can um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, follow us on Facebook and we are on Twitter as well. So we are um, a CPA firm that has that serves a variety of different um, ethnic groups, different businesses. So collectively, our staff speak nine different languages. Uh, we love to share knowledge and that is the spirit of the firm and that's why we do these webinars. Uh, we take your well-being personally, knowing that if you do well, we will as well. Um, so yes, we are a full service CPA firm. So please consider us for accounting, advisory, payroll, tax needs, um, and audit needs. Many of you already know Ying Sa. She is our CEO and managing partner. Um, some, some things that she likes to tell people is that she does have a passion for advocacy. So she is on the National Taxpayer Advocacy Panel, um, a advisory committee to the IRS. So if you ever have ideas on improvement for IS, IRS process, you can feel free to email her, ying at communitycpa.com. She is also an author, so she has her first book out. It was published in 2019, Appointment with Ying at 8 a.m., and it is all about starting a business and how to do that. Um, and she is currently working on her second book, her 10 a.m. book, which will be on developing and growing the business. So that is to come out this year. No responsibility disclaimer, of course, we just always want to say that uh, take what you hear here with a grain of salt. Um, a lot of information that we share are very time sensitive. So um, we, we do plan to have Jane back on again um, to speak about some of the funds um, as they release new information. So just take what we say here with a grain of salt. Um, <laughs> It's always good advice. All right, so Jane, um, I thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate having you on here. Um, so Jane uh, has been in the SBA for many years. Um, she's served a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Virginia, Delaware, and West Virginia district offices. Um, and then prior to that, um, working in the advertising um, economic development um, field. And she also has many awards, which you can see here. So thank you once again, Jane, for joining us today. Very happy to have you here. Um, do, do you want to say anything about yourself before we kind of dive in? No, not about me. I just wanted to do a shout out to, because our team at the SBA, um, Many people don't realize in our district office, we only have five people. And um, they, my coworkers have been just working around the clock, just very dedicated and um, very committed to helping small businesses get through this. Just like all of you at Community CPA, and we appreciate the partnership um, with your firm as well. And when you, um, when you introduce Ying Sa, we always, I always also say the award-winning Ying Sa because we've also recognized her for her advocacy as well. Wonderful, thank you so much for that. Um, so we know that the SBA has played a central part in 
all the relief that has happened during the pandemic. So you, Jane, as the district director of the SBA Iowa district office, um, you have firsthand knowledge about what's going on in your office, uh, what's going on with the businesses. Um, so can you tell us a bit about what your agency is doing to assist um, in this region during this time, like currently? Well, we don't sleep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure, or um, just like small businesses. So, um, you know, at the SBA, we're a federal agency. We're part of the president's cabinet. We take it very seriously, um, Catherine, that we feel very strongly that we work for small businesses. And so, um, we really feel that we're all in this together. And I think if, um, you know, from the get-go from last March with all of the, a, a, a lot of the economic recovery programs have been run through the SBA. And so we truly have been on the front lines with this. Um, but I think that with small businesses, um, we have been living this and breathing um, every day with them, um, helping them through this. So. We're spending a lot of time, a lot of people don't see behind the scenes. We, we, uh, we've uh, still primarily continue to telework um, and working remotely, but we are sitting behind our laptops all day long and into the evening, answering questions from banks, um, from small business owners, from associations, their representatives. We're doing webinars. We're just trying to get the word out there's been a lot of changes along the way um, as um, Congress or um, an administration change. You know, there's just been a lot of different things happening. And um, especially as 2020 went on, you know, there was different um, industries were harder hit. Um, there was there was just so much activity going on and everybody you know, pivot has to be the word of 2020 because small businesses were pivoting, but all of us were pivoting too, to adjust our assistance to small businesses so that we could have a greater impact so that they could keep the lights on and the doors open. And um, that's really what we've been doing. We've been living and breathing all of this and, and um, initiating a lot of programs, trying to help small businesses get across the finish line. Um, meeting with businesses one-on-one, -on -one, um, going out with targeted organizations or doing webinars. hours. Um, I, you know, if I have a conversation with a business three months ago, I try to remember that if something comes up that could benefit that business and then we're emailing them out or calling them. Um, so I just went and picked up lunch um, at a local restaurant and told them about and spent about 15 minutes talking about the restaurant relief grant program that's going to be coming out. So, so we're really living this 24 seven, trying to help small businesses and, and I'm trying our best. Um, sometimes we don't get answers as quickly as we would like either, or they're forever changing just because there's a lot of dynamics involved with this. There's a lot of, um, Everybody's just seeing, thinking of their own business, but all across the country, this is going on. So it's, it has been um, very dynamic the, the last year, um, very scary for a lot of us. Um, and, you know, we've gone through it too. It's, it's been hard. I mean, it's taken its toll emotionally on us as well as small businesses and their families and their employees. So um, we just appreciate um, CPA firms like yours, the law firms, the, all the um, other organizations, um, Iowa Economic Development Authority, for example, at the state level, all of our resource partners that we work with and chambers and everybody, everybody's been working together to try to help small businesses um, stay afloat. Thanks so much, Jane. So we heard that PPP, the Payroll Protection Program, got extended to May 31st, um, so more small businesses can get funded. Do you have any advice to small businesses out there who are still not applying or haven't applied due to worries about 
Yeah, don't wait until um, end of May to get um, to get moving on whether you if you already have a first draw PPP and you're applying for a second draw. Um, don't wait until May to do it. Um, know that these funds are out there, but um, they're starting to it started to dwindle down a little bit. But what we're also seeing is a lot of um, banks and credit unions have have been doing this for a very long time and they've reached their thresholds on how much they're going, the capacity that they have to do because they have other things they need to do within their lending institution. Um, they've been dedicating a lot of resources to this. And so um, some banks and credit unions have been contacting us that they are no longer taking new applications um, there or they've just stopped altogether. Some um, have only taken applications all along to existing customers. So we've been spending a lot of time helping businesses too, or the applicants, <coughs> small businesses and nonprofits to um, identify a lending, you know, if they didn't have that lending relationship, helping them across the finish line. And especially the last month, there's been such a focus on the self-employed because the Schedule C filers um, and the changes that the um, Biden administration made um, to benefit um, self-employed and the smaller businesses. Uh, so a lot of those um, applications have been coming in in the past month, but um, people are starting to really have a difficult time, time trying to find a lender. And so we have the lender match program at SBA that we help to match up with lenders across the country, here in Iowa, across the region, whatever. But we are, um, I, that's why I just encourage, you don't wanna just walk into um, a bank or a credit union and expect them to do process a PPP loan. Um, they wanna see some type of a relationship. And a lot of that um, businesses shouldn't be offended by because a lot of it has to do with cybersecurity and identity theft and everything. They wanna work with somebody they already know or that they have an existing relationship with or accounts and things like that. So, so yeah, it's, it's um, still going on, um, but we are starting to see that dwindle down and we're st uh, shifting into some additional programs and everything as well. Okay, excellent. So if somebody does have questions, should they talk to, the bank that they're banking with or should they talk to the SBA or? They can contact the SBA, they can contact their lender. Um, we also have um, our small business development centers around the state. We have um, score chapters that they are volunteers that um, provide free counseling as well. We have a women's business center at the Iowa Center for Economic Success and our veterans business outreach center. All four of those programs are the counseling and training arm of the SBA, and they're helping with um, answering questions, cash flow, helping with applications along those lines. Awesome, that's great to know. So you mentioned the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Um, do you have any updates on that that you can that you're able to share with us today? I will say we do not have officially have a launch date to give out yet. Nothing is public. Um, we have been doing some internal training um, at the SBA um, and we, we are not gonna be running the program through the, the lending community. It's gonna be run directly through the SBA. Um, I'm not able to share any guidelines yet. We're in the, pro in the final stages of getting approval for all the, the guidelines and everything. But we anticipate probably within the next two weeks that um, that we're gonna have information out and um, start doing some of the training programs on it. So more information to come. I will say we're very fortunate at the SBA that the head of our office of field operations, which our 68 offices, district offices report to, um, she just came on board under um, the Biden administration. And we're very, very fortunate. Uh, somebody we know very well because she used to be at the SBA, but she also has um, has owned um, several brew pubs. And so she's really um, 
hunkered in on, you know, made sure that she's planted there and making sure that this legislation or the, the guidelines and, and all, the, all the, the rules for the program are as streamlined as possible so that she's looking at it from the restaurant perspective. So um, we're very, very thankful for that. Awesome. And then regarding the shuttered venue um, operator, it launched today. It yes. launched today at noon and there was a problem um, with this system crashing. So I don't have any more word on it. I know some applicants were emailing me that um, that we had just gotten word out to. So from the SBA perspective, um, the Shutter Venue Operator Grant Program is going to be um, a tiered rollout um, based on um, the losses. And it is directly related to the performing arts industry, period. And um, so that launched today. Um, we are not able in the district office to answer any specific questions regarding the program legally because it is a federal grant process. But all of our resource partners have been engaged and trained to be able to answer um, and help with um, answering questions of applicants and everything. So again, small business development centers, the SCORE chapters, Women's Business Center and the Veterans Business Outreach Centers um, will have information on that. They can reach out to the SBA and we can put them in touch with them, but I just can't answer eligibility questions. But the program is launching today. Um, we've been really looking forward to this. Um, this is really related to the performing arts, but it could be museums and um, um, performing arts venues that have been really hard hit okay. during the, um, the pandemic. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so, yes, yeah, so if they are looking for resources then to help them in that process, then they can follow up with SBDC and those other um, ones that yeah. you named. So the Shuttered Venue Operator Grant Program, there is a dedicated website um, at sba.gov backslash um, SVOG is the name of the program, um, SVOG um, um, Grant, I'm sorry, SVO Grant, um, Shuttered Venue Operator Grant, um, SVO Grant. So that is where all the information, tutorials, um, uh, it, it, it just uh, uh, questions and answers, uh, frequently asked questions, a lot of the guidelines, everything is on there. Yes, thank you. Yes, no problem. Um, so I know that the SBA uh, does some of the loans and lending. Um, can you tell us about the different um, loans that are available through the SBA? Sure. So basically we do everything. I mean, while all this is going on, we're still doing our regular operations. So all this is just on top of our regular work. Um, so we, we have um, loan programs for pretty much everything out there for small business it, with some restrictions on some industries that we can't work with or um, some um, use of proceeds for loans. But we do everything from working capital to commercial real estate to buying equipment to a business acquisitions really big. We, we uh, do a lot of loans on that. One of the unheralded um, uh, successes of the Recovery Act and all the different um, initiatives that were out there to support small business that really did not get the attention that the PPP program or the EIDL program has gotten is our um, SBA Debt Relief Act um, initiatives. And with that, and they had to scale back because the demand was so great, but um, basically small businesses, if they have an existing or new SBA loan, depending on the um, um, different situations, it could range from three to 11 months of payments that SBA is making on those loans, free and clear for the business owner. So if I was getting a new SBA loan, I would not have to, um, at the agency is making three of those payments for me, um, which is huge. Um, 
with cash flow. And a lot of businesses have really pointed to that as, um, uh, you know, very beneficial, especially if they got PPP and they were hurting and, and everything. It just really helped to reduce um, some of their expenses and to help with their cash flow and keep the doors open. So, um, so we have initiatives like that going on as well. Um, our programs, how SBA works, and this is how the easiest way I like to describe it. So SBA doesn't do direct lending. We, we provide government guaranteed loans through banks and credit unions. So you never go into a bank looking for an SBA loan. The bank will determine if they can do it conventionally, all power to that business owner. They're always going to get the best rates that way. Most small businesses can't, um, whether because they're a startup, they're in a very risky industry, or there's uh, less collateral, maybe they can't qualify for conventional lending right out of the gate. So the SBA comes in and we guarantee that loan to the, to the bank. Now the business owner is, the, the bank is still giving, say it's a $100,000 loan. The bank is still loaning 100,000 to the business owner. They still have to pay back the bank 100000 but behind the scenes, we're making that loan possible by reducing their credit exposure um, for the bank. And it puts them in a better, uh, more comfortable position, especially if it's a startup or if it's a riskier industry like uh, the restaurant industry or something. So SBA, right now, we're giving banks 90% guarantees on, our, on our, um, most of our loan programs. So that means the bank is only risking $10,000 of a $100,000 loan. So at the end of the day, I mean, the business owner still wants to pay back the loan, but if there was any loss at the end of the day, if the business would fail, whatever the ultimate loss is, the, the SBA is reimbursed in the bank. In that case, 90% of that loss. So we're just behind the scenes, we're making that deal happen. And when you think about SBA and you think about companies that got their start with SBA, there are too many to, to name, but you know, you think of Nike, Intel, Federal Express, Nike, Ben & Jerry's, Under Armour, all these companies, national, comp national brands. But Nike, I, I always look at Nike as the story to tell because when Phil Knight was selling tennis shoes out of the trunk of his car, he couldn't get anybody to, um, to, he wasn't, they thought he was crazy. They didn't, you know, didn't think it was bankable. So the SBA actually guaranteed his, um, his, his first inventory and took a shot, or, you know, took a chance on Nike. And, um, and then obviously he grew and he didn't need us anymore. But without that initial financing, he may, may have given up and just thought that he never could have gotten the financing. So, um, you know, we, we play a very important role in helping a lot of businesses get started and to grow and to support their dreams. That's awesome. So um, who would be like the, a good candidate for one of those SBA sponsored loans? Well, everybody, but I mean, there's a process. You never, um, we always tell everybody to, the more you prepare, the more successful you're going to be. And so we have a network of what, who we call our resource partners that we fund that provide a critical counseling and training um, to small businesses. The Small Business Development Center score, the Women's Business Center, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center. And they're in a very important part of the SBA because they provide that foundation, the research, the business planning. Um, right now, I mean, when businesses have to pivot in a crisis, they play a pivotal role in helping with cash flow analysis or maybe identifying an additional revenue stream. So that's so important for small businesses to have that foundation and to get ready to go to, the, to um, a bank or credit union to get an SBA loan or to get another, um, any, you know, if they could qualify for conventional or another program as well. Okay, great. And then did, are there any other SBA programs or resources that you want to mention that we have? Well, we, we, we touch everything. I mean, either we're funding or we're overseeing. People only see the things that they're in their avenue. But 
Um, we're actually pretty busy at the SBA because we also do a lot of work with government contracting, with surety bonding to be able to fund those, those contracts. Um, we do disaster. Anytime there's a federal disaster, um, SBA is the nation's disaster bank to help with the rebuilding process. Um, we have uh, advocacy. We have the Small Business Innovation Research Program, a venture capital program. So there's a lot of things that SBA is involved in. The capital counseling and contracting are the main focus of the 68 district offices and what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, thank you so much, Jane. I really appreciate you coming. And uh, so I'm gonna share your information with everyone. Um, Jane, this is, this is uh, the contact for the SBA um, Iowa district office. So you can give them a call or go onto the website um, to, to find resources. So. Absolutely. And, and if they, um, um, I, I also want to mention that you have the website there, the, at the SBA.gov, we, it's, it's some invaluable resources there as well. We have thousands of online classes that we offer for free too. So a lot of times when people are working with our resource partners, they're not married to one. They could take, get um, counseling from a small business development center um, attend training from SCORE, go online and take our classes. So they can um, use all the different programs. And uh, a lot of the businesses, the, the really smart businesses, use them well beyond just the startup phase. Mm, awesome. So we do actually have a question. Um, okay. Somebody asked um, if there are new guidelines that have come up on the IDLE program new guidelines yes. on idle no um idle is the guidelines are the same two um two changes they just increase the um um the loan amounts up to five hundred thousand um so what what this um any changes that have came come about are not for new lenders right now. Um, they are for existing idle lenders or uh, existing I idle borrowers that are going back. Um, and SBA will be in touch, um, are, is directly contacting, our disaster office is directly contacting the impacted businesses. So um, there's certain businesses that will be able to um, go back and raise their loan limits if they want to. And they're just starting to reach out to those businesses um, if they're eligible for that. The other thing is too, is when IDLE first came out, and this gets very confusing, Catherine, and I apologize because there's just been so many different programs and so many um, stimulus funding or you know, stimulus bills coming out of Washington and everything. So it gets confusing for a lot of people. But when, um, when everything really happened last March, we didn't launch the PPP program until April 3rd on a, Friday, on a Thursday night. And um, IDLE, Economic Injury Disaster Loans, was a standing program that SBA had in our disaster, um, in our Office of Disaster Assistance. So what they did is um, they rolled out idle and then the demand was so great because so many businesses were hurting that they kind of pivoted and kind of reduced, um, they streamlined a lot of the requirements for the idle program on what would normally be needed. And um, it just because so many businesses were harder hit and we were trying to get the they were trying to get the funding out to those businesses much quicker. So IDLE was the first program out. And if, at the beginning, we they introduced a, a grant aspect to it, that it was called the IDLE Advance. And in, in the legislation, it was up to $10,000. But because the demand was so high, it was just, it, it, everybody was caught off guard with the demand and the millions and millions of applications. 
So what they had to do was to pivot so that they could reach more small businesses. So they changed it to 1,000 per employee. And so some businesses say if you were self-employed, you only got a, um, you may have gotten a $1,000 grant. If you had 10 employees, you got a $10,000 grant. So what they did under idle um, in this latest round of funding is they dedicated some of that funding to going back to those businesses that got less than $10,000 on the original grant and trying to make them whole. And we're calling it the targeted um, idle advance. So, but you also had to have more than 30% um, loss um, in revenue and also to be located within a low income community. Mm -hmm. And there's a mapping tool that they came out with to identify if your business is in that low income community. So um, some businesses are able, or some of those applicants are, are if they, they meet those qualifications, they were um, contacted by the SBA and asked to just submit a brief uh, application to um, request the additional funding under the targeted idle grant. And so that is going on right now, but only the businesses that were qualified or that were um, um, deemed uh, potentially qualified for, um, for those two changes and they're getting directly contacted by the SBA. Now, there might be some additional changes down the, down the road for that program or some others. Right now, we're rolling out today the Shutter Venue Operator Grant um, for the performing arts industry. And it, within a couple of weeks, um, we should be uh, rolling out the restaurant relief um, fund. And that is um, more guidelines will be coming out on that. Um, you know, not just uh, restaurants, it's brew pubs, it's um, bakeries and, and um, some other um, related industries too. Awesome, and we um, would love to invite you back at that time so that we can share all this updated information with people. So I wanted to thank you in advance for that, but then yeah. also to thank you for being on here today, sharing about the SBA's work and um, talking about these programs that are coming out. So I think people really need to know. If I could ask to um, my email address is probably the best way to reach me. Okay. Um, the phone number, we are not, um, we've had a lot of COVID cases in our federal building. So we are um, still working remotely. Email is always the best to reach any of us at the SBA. And I'm at jane, J-A-Y-N-E dot armstrong at sba.gov. Excellent. Um, and anybody who is attending here, please do feel free to shoot me an email if you want um, to, to talk to Jane, um, and I can help connect if that is, um, that is something that anybody needs. So my email is Catherine at communitycpa.com. Um, and then we are, we have these webinars uh, every day except Sunday, 3 p.m. So we hope to see you all again. Again, thanks so much, Jane. We really appreciate your time. And, and thank you, Catherine, for everything that you're doing, you and Yang and the team. So thank you. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks.